Hello everybody and welcome to episode 5 of Berrysville. In today's episode, as you can probably see from the title and the thumbnail, we are starting something that has been very requested um, in, this, in this series, and uh, that is the abandoned airfield. So, I thought it was time to uh, create this, because as I said, a lot of people have been wanting to see something like this, and I also had in plan to create an airfield uh, when I started this project, so... Um, so yeah, now we're finally getting to, to do it. Um, but I'm using this uh, hanger here, which I thought looked pretty cool. Uh, I tried to look around on the workshop. Um, most of the hangers were just a little bit too big and uh, the like theme with them didn't really fit. But I find, found the, this one and uh, then I also found another one. And this one, the first one I put down, uh, uh, had a lot of like unnecessary props and, uh, and decals and stuff that I didn't want. So I actually went into the the asset creator um, and uh, changed that one and got rid of all the props. So definitely a tip if you sort of get annoyed <laughs> by unnecessary props and, and stuff like that in an asset. It's super simple to just uh, get rid of them. You just um, uncheck the load existing props uh, when you load the, um, the asset. Uh, but otherwise that hanger looks really nice. Um, but um, I'm putting down a bunch of cracks here on, on the runway and um, this is something I saw uh, in the one in Shamrock, uh, which I'm not like, I'm not, well, I'm taking a little bit of inspiration from the one in Shamrock, but I'm doing most of this just, uh, just I guess, in my own, in my own way. Um, but uh, these cracks I saw on the Shamrock airfield that there were a bunch of these and I sort of thought it looked really cool and it gave the feeling of a more abandoned airfield. Actually, I don't think the one in Shamrock really is abandoned. I think there might be like planes flying in there sometimes. Definitely not like commercial airplanes, but like private planes, uh, some like really small ones. Uh, but this one is definitely going to be totally abandoned. So now we're getting to the most coolest part of this episode, and that is this custom made uh, crop duster, which uh, Die Hard Hunter made for this series. And um, yeah, so I asked Die Hard Hunter, Die Hard Hunter um, which is the guy that also created the abandoned vehicles uh, props uh, for this project. So I asked him if he wanted to make a sort of abandoned uh, little airplane, a crop duster. And um, he wanted to do it. He like pulled that get together in like one or two days, which was pretty incredible. Um, so the prop he made just looks amazing. Uh, I love the fact that it's yellow because uh, a lot of these crop dusters crop dusters seem to be yellow and uh, it just looks so cool and I, I wanted to have like a crop duster because uh, it seemed like it would fit really well uh, in an airfield like this and uh, I think I'll do like some more farms as well. We're actually doing a farm in today's episode um, which turns out pretty nice. But, um, but uh, yeah, I think I also might do more farms, maybe like some even more abandoned farms. Um, so I think it definitely makes sense to have a crop duster here. And of course the prop just looks amazing. So thank you so much to Die Hard Hunter uh, for making this and it will be available on the workshop uh, when this video comes out. So definitely go and check that out and put that in your own city. Um, so. So now I'm using some more, well, I could actually talk about uh, how I created this whole runway, uh, which you probably saw <laughs> in the time lapse, but I used all of the like ploppable asphalt, because um, uh, I just wanted to have the runway look really simple and uh, do all the detail work myself. So I just decided to put down the largest ploppable asphalt, or no, the second largest ploppable asphalt, just have that as the runway, and then just detail it myself with all of the cracks and uh, those lines by, by Ronix. So this is all, the ground is all created uh, with ploppable asphalt, which I, turn out, which I think turned out really nice. Because um, I didn't want to use the, uh, the runway mod, whatever that is. Because, um, I mean, those runways are a little bit too big uh, for these types of planes. Um, but yeah, I think this turned out really good. And I'm putting down this other hanger, um, um, which is by Liglair uh, on the workshop. You can just search for hanger and just scroll down a little bit and it will show up. And uh, the first one we put down is by Toxic Sludge as well, in case you're interested in downloading those two. 
Um, the collection will be uh, available eventually, I'm still working on it, um, but uh, yeah, <laughs> I, I know a lot of people have been asking for that, uh, even though I talked about it in the in episode 3 I think it was, uh, well anyways, I'm, I'm getting off track. Um, so using a lot of these dirt decals again, um, I might sort of like stop using these dirt decals, decals as much as I'm doing at the, po uh, at the moment. Uh, at least for like putting them down in just like open areas, not like this, because I really like how this looks with the dirt decals. But some guy uh, in the last episode suggested that I should sort of sort of tune down the amount of uh, these dirt decals I'm using, uh, which probably makes sense. But I just think they look so good, uh, and uh, I think they make for some great detailing uh, out in the uh, out in the um, I guess just open landscape. Um, but I might do that, and also the texture, uh, the ground texture is a little bit repetitive, um, so I might try to change that um, when I get some time, because um, that is definitely something I want to do. I've seen a lot of people also say that the ground texture is pretty re repetitive, which I definitely agree with, uh, but I, I still think it looks really nice, but uh, definitely want to try to fix that in some way. Um, so now I'm making these little, uh, I guess, turning points, whatever. Uh, they probably have some better name uh, for the for the airplanes here, and uh, I'm totally copying <laughs> the airport in uh, or airfield in Shamrock because um, it has these sort of turning points, which you'll see on screen now. Um, and I thought it was just a really cool design, and I wanted to try out something like that. Now I don't put down any runway markings uh, on this runway. Um, I, I don't think it would make sense to have runway markings, maybe I'm totally wrong, uh, but I would sort of consider this like the just a step over a dirt runway, because uh, dirt runways obviously doesn't have those like numbers and um, touchdown markings and stuff, so um, I don't think I want to put down markers on this one, uh, but maybe that is totally unrealistic and maybe all like uh, runways that are made of asphalt or concrete or whatever, um, have those markings. I don't know. I'm not sure. Uh, like you can't really see that good uh, in Shamrock if it has markings. Maybe there is, uh, but uh, for this episode at least <laughs> I didn't put down any markers, but if it's totally unrealistic to not have any markers, uh, definitely let me know. But now it's time to take a look at the stories that were suggested for the last episode. So yeah, let's jump right into that. The Bearsville Trailer Park, also known unofficially by locals as Bartsville, is the proud home of all of about nine residents. The land was originally purchased by Bart McHugh, who was planning on building a large home there to live with his wife. However, shortly after the purchase, his wife divorced him, taking most of the money with her. Now very poor, he decided to scrap his large plans for a simple trailer home. To gain some income, he started selling parts of his land to others who needed a place to put their trailer home. Eventually, he gained enough money through sales to purchase the recently foreclosed ready-to-roll tire shop across the street. He eventually reopened it under the same name. However, after selling just tires for six months, he decided to expand its services to include repair and scrap. He used the empty lot behind the shop to place his scrapped cars. After about six years of successful business, he sold his own trailer home and built a small house behind his shop. Now he lives there with his two cats, living off a fairly modest income, still trying to sell his last plot of land in his trailer park. The truck wash was a significant sign of the prosperity of Bearsville. It was originally built by a Belarusian trucker named Alex Varshkov in the 1960s. The truck stop offered truckers auto service, a car wash and even a lounge for them. But the stop was took over by his son when Alex unfortunately was killed in a truck accident. However, when the interstate bypassed the town it was considered garbage and business slowed down. But this oddly helped the truck stop because there were two other truck washes that closed due to the lack of customers that sat on the abandoned side of town. As days turn into decades, the end is now near. As of May 9, 2005, Alex's son committed suicide due to a faulty drug. His brother then took over, but sadly the brother has not enough money. 
The truck wash is seeing its last days as of a new truck stop was proposed in 2010 near the highway entrance. Business is slowing and rumors emerge that the owner is planning to file for chapter 7 bankruptcy and liquidate the entire stop. Thank you so much to Captain Viridian for creating this story for the trailer park and the scrapyard. And also thank you so much to Despacito for creating the story for the truck wash. Anyways, let's get back to the time lapse. So I hope you enjoyed today's story segment and uh, yeah, so now we're back in the time lapse or we have been for a few minutes, but uh, now the commentary is back at least. Um, so uh, talking about the commentary, uh, I asked you guys in the last episode if you would prefer more commentary or more music and a lot of you said that it was a pretty good balance how it is at the moment. So uh, a little bit of music, a little bit of commentary and uh, yeah, I, I think I'll stick to this. Um, I think it works pretty nicely. Uh, just wanted to get your opinion on it, because um, because I know like some people prefer more commentary, some people prefer more music. So that's just why I asked. Uh, but it seems like this is a a sort of good um, good style of doing it at the moment. Um, but uh, what I'm doing on screen is just finishing up the final touches here around this uh, this airfield. So obviously using all of these dirty decals, putting down these shrubs and some trees. And uh, yeah, I'm using these like trees by Pidelmo and then I also use another tree by someone I can't remember the name of. Uh, but uh, that sort of style with these dirt decals and the shrubs is something I've been using now since the start of the project to just detail between uh, different areas and spots, like between buildings. 
Um, and I think it looks really nice. Um, I think I'll do this just all over this <clears throat> this area and this town. Because um, I, I really like when uh, everything just sort of fits together nicely. So you don't have an area that looks specific in one way. And then you have some other area that looks totally different. So I think I'll uh, really stick to this style for this town. And I think that's going to make it really good. Uh, but now I'm putting down a bunch of like props and different uh, stuff around these hangers. Just to make it a little bit more interesting. Uh, and also sort of get this place to life a little bit more even though it's sort of abandoned but I think it looks way better uh, when you put some more props and stuff you don't have to put too many things just a few piles and also a few cars here I'm putting down uh, and it sort of looks nice but yeah feel free to come up with a a story for this airfield um, just as you guys usually do for uh, different buildings and stuff um, and you don't have to like come up with a story that explains why the abandoned or the airfield got abandoned uh, You can like come up with a story that is about like the guy or someone who flew the airplane and what he did or she did um, And uh, yeah, so just be real creative You can do whatever you want with the stories and the one that gets the most upvotes of course I will feature that in the next episode uh, as usual and I really think it's it's really cool this whole thing with the stories and stuff and I, I really get excited when when I get a comment uh, that includes some type of story for the project it's just super cool reading those I read all of the comments um, but it's just extra nice to to see when someone writes a story and I wish I could use all of them of course uh, but that's not really possible and I will instead just have to go with the the one that gets the most upvotes which I think is the the most fair system, um, and uh, yeah, but yeah, as I said, <laughs> I wish I could use all of them, but it's not really possible. Um, so yeah, make sure to uh, suggest a story, story for the airfield, and uh, we'll feature that in the next episode. So um, yeah, but uh, now we're getting to the second sort of thing we're doing for this episode. So um, the, the airfield turned out a little bit short to just use that footage, so I decided to make something something other than that as well and I decided to put down this farm here sort of next to this airfield almost because um, someone suggested a that I should down, put down like a farm uh, where the whole town gets its supplies from so like bread and stuff uh, that was suggested in the last episode um, by someone I can't remember the name of but I'll try to put it up on screen if I remember um, so that's why I, that's where I got that idea from. Uh, so I made this farm here uh, with this red barn, which is actually a prop. And um, I actually got I actually got super uh, happy how this whole farm turned out. I think it turned out really nice because uh, I've done some farms before, and I mean they've been decent, but this one I actually got super proud of. And uh, yeah, <laughs> just very happy how it turned out. So let me know what you think about it. Uh, if it's realistic, I think this is definitely realistic because seems to be a lot of like ranches and stuff in Texas and uh, But maybe not this sort of style of barn is realistic, uh, but I don't know, I don't really care because <laughs> I really like how it looks so I'll definitely keep this this one uh, But uh, I, I think it definitely should make sense uh, to have this sort of farm here um, But I uh, also wanted to address some other questions. I've got uh, in uh, recent uh, episodes, so that is about my computer specs. Uh, have got a lot of comments about that, and uh, actually, if you go onto my channel and just search for for setup, uh, you will find my uh, gaming setup video that I did uh, when I got 5,000 subscribers. Um, so there you have all of my specs. I'll probably put those on my about page on my channel as well. Uh, but uh, yeah, so just search for that and I'll include the link to that video in the description in case you're interested in my specs and um, Yeah, so if someone asks on like future videos It would be super awesome if you guys could just like sort of redirect them to that video Because uh, I've gotten a, lot, a bunch of questions about that um, Which is sort of interesting, but yeah anyways, and also I've also got a, a bunch of questions for uh, what type of LUT I'm using. Uh, so I'm using the Relight Cool LUT from, or LUT or LUT, not sure how to say it. I know you can say it like in both ways, but but yeah. So I'm using the Relight Cool from the uh, Relight mod, of course, by Ronix. So uh, you have to download that mod uh, to get uh, the LUT because you get a bunch of different um, LUTs in that mod and I'm using the Relight Cool. So. 
that's the answer for that question. Now it's almost time to get into the live gameplay. There are a few minutes left of the time lapse that you will have to enjoy with some music. Uh, but yeah, I'll see you in the live gameplay. So now we're here in the live gameplay and I thought I would just go ahead and show a little bit more in detail of everything we did in the time lapse. Um, so uh, yeah, this is the airfield, how it turned out. This is the overview, looks like this. I uh, I think it turned out really nice, I'm very happy how it, um, how it ended up and uh, I think the runway length is uh, pretty decent as well. I don't think it's too short. Uh, and not too long either um, and I really like these turning points for the airplanes and I think these um, these lines down uh, so they would look a little bit more more like used and uh, sort of torn up and like not like totally new and fresh or whatever um, so I really like how that turned out uh, like it's a little bit lower down here in the ground so you can barely see it and here it comes up a little bit more and I really like that sort of detail uh, with it so uh, pretty happy how that turned out and um, and yeah and here we of course have the amazing crop duster by uh, by Die Hard Hunter so make sure to go ahead and check this uh, prop uh, check out this prop um, in the workshop when this video comes out he did an amazing job on this and so glad to be able to use it in this airfield um, so yeah uh, but uh, here we have these hangers and uh, sorry for this <laughs> once again but yeah we well, have these hangers here and i thought it looked sort of nice to put down these um these signs or whatever these are uh, on the hanger i, I thought it sort of looked cool um especially on this one uh, i put down on this one as well uh which also lo also looks pretty nice um then just some uh, some general detailing around here. Uh, a lot of these like props and few abandoned cars. We have this one down there by Beard Monkey and uh, also this one by Die Hard Hunter. Um, and yeah, just props like this, which makes it look uh, much better. And um, also use these tanks, which I don't know, maybe maybe fuel for the planes. Uh, I'd assume. Um, so uh, so yeah, this is sort of the airfield. How that turned out. Uh, here is the overview once again. Um, very happy how it turned out. Then we went on and obviously did this farm, uh, which isn't 100% like uh, done yet. Um, I didn't fence off back here, and um, that is that I'm not sure if I'm gonna like make it even bigger um, in the future, or maybe just I'll fence it off here, um, or we will see what we do here. Maybe I put some more roads going here or whatever. Um, so yeah, we'll see about that. But it's pretty much done, and um, I want to put like some. Uh, some tractors and stuff here as well. So that's actually something we can do because I have these downloaded. Uh, so I think I might like put down one or two here. Um, this one is pretty cool. And uh, then I also have this one. <clears throat> I don't think I want the blue one. Uh, maybe not the black. So I think there might only be black and blue. <laughs> um, no, there was a green one there, which looks actually really nice. Um, so I'll use this one, uh, put it here underneath this little shed, um, which is a pretty nice asset. Um, is it sunken down correctly? I think it is. Um, yeah, that looks good. Um, so it will be under there, sort of taking cover for now. Um, and then I think, I think I also want to use this one 
because uh, it also looks pretty cool. I think I might turn it around a little bit and put it like here or something. So that's pretty nice. And uh, we might do some, I actually wasn't planning on doing this. I actually wasn't planning on making some some live gameplay building, uh, which is gonna showcase everything. But then I just decided that I wanted to put down some tractors underneath here, because that was actually something I was going to do. Uh, but for some reason I ended up not <laughs> including that uh, or doing that in the time lapse. Um, but yeah, I'm just gonna put down these here. Uh, maybe they would have dro drove sort of something like this. I don't know. <laughs> just just placing these decals a little bit random. Uh, we could perhaps put down some some trees here um, as well. I want to uh, use this one. And uh, this is actually a bush I'm using a lot. And it's also by Pedelmo. Because uh, in the time lapse I thought it was by some other guy. But uh, it's actually by Pedelmo as well. Because he makes the greatest... Bushes and trees, of course, um, but uh, but yeah, so this one is a tree or bush I'm using a bunch uh, in this project uh, in a lot of different areas like I'm using it in pretty much all of these sort of shrub areas with the dirt decals as well uh, Maybe not these many uh, of them. I, I think I want to I think I want to get maybe one of these uh, next to here something like that and then we could probably finish off this with like a dirt decal um, here and maybe there as well and perhaps one down here. I think that looks kind of nice. Just gonna put down one more there. That's pretty good. Um, then I sometimes like to put some uh, gravel or whatever underneath here uh, just to get rid of those um, those tufts or whatever those are. Grass sprites I think, I think they're called. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm kind of happy how that turned out. Looks pretty nice with these tractors. Uh, but yeah, anyways, <laughs> let's look at the farm a little bit more. So uh, this is the house where I'd assume the, the people um, owning this farm live. Um, seems to be a pretty like wealthy home. Uh, probably the most wealthy people uh, of this town uh, live here. And as I said in time lapse, this is sort of meant to be the farm that is supplying all of the food and uh, supplies for the town. Um, so, um, so yeah, these people here, I would assume, I would assume are pretty, pretty wealthy. Um, and I think this house looks pretty nice as well. Uh, I put a tank there for some reason. Uh, then I have a sort of, uh, sort of table here with a barbecue as well, which I think looks pretty cool. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much the farm. Put this truck here as well. Uh, all of these vehicles you see I've placed and they're props. This is the overview of the farm. And uh, I'm actually super happy how this turned out. This is probably my favorite farm I've done in City Skylines. And, uh, and yeah, let me know what you think about it. So I really like this barn. It's actually a super nice asset um, that I got to use. And uh, yeah, but enough with that. Uh, I think that is going to do it for this, uh, this live gameplay section of this episode. So here you can see both the airfield and the farm. So yeah, uh, but now we're gonna go ahead and uh, take a look at the cinematics and end off this video. So if you enjoyed it, um, making the airfield, which a lot of people have uh, have suggested, make sure to drop a like on the video, that is much appreciated. And uh, make sure to subscribe if you're new to the channel as well. Also follow me on Twitter uh, in case you want updates and uh, teasers, all sort of stuff like that for mostly Bearsville at the moment. Uh, but yeah, make sure to follow me out there, link in the description. That's gonna do it. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Have a great day and bye-bye. <laughs>